bitch is shaking the table. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Shaking the Table Podcast. For my very first episode, I wanted to talk to y'all about New Year's resolutions because I feel like we're now in February, one month in, and it's time to check in and see if any of y'all have made any progress. Now, I'm just going to issue a disclaimer. I really hate New Year's resolutions. And when I said that to some of the people I was having conversations with, they thought I was weird. And so I figured that I would take this time to just explain to y'all why I hate New Year's resolutions and then talk about, I guess, how I basically shape my year or what the outlook for my year and for my life will be in 2019, just so I can kind of clear that up publicly, because that's how we address the disrespect publicly. Okay, so obviously we're in a new year and everybody's on that whole new year, new me BS for like the fifth year in a row. And that's cool. Go out and make the necessary changes in your life. If you want to lose weight, lose weight. If you want to start a business, start the business. If you want to travel more, save money, actually do that. That is fantastic. But I do think New Year's resolutions sometimes can be high-key bogus because I feel like people are putting everything off until January, and then they go hard in January, and the beginning of February, and then by Valentine's Day, it's like, hello? 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 What happened to your goal? Are we giving up? Do we just decide not to do this anymore? Like, what's tea? And I'm guilty of this, too, because I have been trying to start a podcast or some kind of YouTube channel or something to creatively express my thoughts and feelings since about 2017. And here we are now in 2019. So I get it. It all comes with time. So instead of me getting on here, acting like I'm finna practice what I preach and make some resolutions that I'm probably not going to follow, I'll just read off a list of personal goals that I feel like I can just actively work on. And when I first came up with this idea, I was like, oh, this is going to be easy because working on yourself is so easy. Like, it can't be that hard, right? But girl, girl, I was wrong because 2018 dragged me, okay? And so 2019 is just me picking myself back up by my wig clips and moving forward to bigger and better things. You heard me? All right, so boom. With these goals, I want us, and when I say us, I mean y'all and me. Because we holding each other accountable in 2019. So we're going to focus on becoming better human beings. And if y'all don't take anything I have to say seriously, please at least try to take this episode seriously. Because when I buckle down and actually get serious, that's when the gems start flowing. And I want people to listen to my goals and really be introspective and say, okay, does this apply to me? How can I improve my life? How exactly can I be the best person moving forward? And I feel like the more we look into ourselves this way, the more we just continue to elevate, elevate, elevate. All right, I'm going to stop being a clown and let's get to the goals. Okay, so the first goal I had for myself in 2019 is just to capitalize off of my talent because I feel like I spent too much time in previous years being too afraid to show people my skill set because I'll be like, oh, this person's so much better than me or they're more creative than me or maybe no one's going to listen to what I have to say, so I'm not going to put it out yet. Just all these kind of bogus things that I would just come up with just as excuses for why I didn't want to start my podcast or any other creative channel. And clearly that's wrong. I am creative. Like I literally work in the digital space. And also when I post my videos and stuff like that on Instagram, just me being silly or me just venting for the day, you guys react well to it. You know, you laugh, you tell me you can relate to me. And that feels good. That just shows me that people are listening. I do have a voice and the things that I say are important to somebody. You know, validation is nice every now and then. Like a lot of creatives try to act like, oh, I don't need validation. I don't care what people think. But when it comes to putting out a product, you do want to be received well because that rejection hurts. And I was so afraid of the rejection. I just didn't try it all. And now that I say it out loud, it just sounds so dumb. (laughs) It literally sounds so stupid. And I didn't want people to think different differently of me I didn't want them to judge me or think that I was weird but fuck that people think I'm weird anyway y'all tell me all the time I'm odd and that's okay I will be the odd ball out I will be the weird person because this is who I really am you know what I'm saying so now it's time for me to really be authentically myself and just show who I am because I feel like you get rewarded for showing people who you really are like be weird be obnoxious be annoying be creative be real and be raw because people get pay for that and shoot some of y'all can use a little bit of this personality like one day i'm gonna just chop my shit up and just start handing it out for the free because one day i'm gonna get the big bucks for it and that's that on that so if this applies to you if you feel like you're in your head a lot get out of your head 
start capitalizing off the talents and side hustles that y'all have because if nobody believes in y'all I believe in y'all. I have pushed so many of my friends to just start that business, to start that channel, to just put yourself out there because all you can do is try. And you can't criticize yourself if you're not even willing to try. And that's me also dragging myself because I wasn't willing to try like I just told y'all. So I'll support whatever it is y'all doing. Unless you out here selling flat tummy tea or them other dumbass detox teas and all of that crap, don't sell me that. Because I'm going to beat your ass. Don't do that. But otherwise, I'll support you a thousand percent. I'll help you promote your stuff. We're going we're gonna to reciprocate this energy, though. Like, if I support you guys, you got to support me back. And that'll be that on that. Okay? So moving forward, we're all going to hop out of our feelings, hop in our bags, and a key, key, key all the way to Bank of America. And I said what I said. Okay? So this next goal, I'm going to keep it really brief because it's very simple, but... I just need to start doing it because it really will change my life. But write it down. Write the things that you come up with and the fantastic 3 a.m. ideas and creative spurts of energy. Write that stuff down. Because I do this thing where I think I'm Jay-Z or like I'm Lil Wayne and I'm going to magically spit some fire and then just remember what I said. Or like maybe the FBI agent in my phone is going to record it and remember it. But girl, no, he's not. He just got off furlough and he ain't got time for my shit today. So I'm going to get up, pull out the notepad, keep my journal, get a dry erase board, whatever I have to do. Because I truly believe that if you write stuff down, the universe will be like, heard you, sis. And then manifest it. All you got to do is write it down and then put the work in and it's going to come to fruition. Granted, it may not happen as smoothly as that, but y'all get what I'm saying. Like, put it out there in the universe, write it down, manifest it, boom. And I need to start doing that probably today, to be honest. And I need to probably start with a grocery list because your girl's starving. Like, you can start to see my ribs through my shirt. Like, it's really getting bad out here. It's, it's hard. It's hard. So, just remember that goal. Write it down. Okay? All right, so goal number three. This is really important because this one was something that I didn't notice like at all. Like, the other goals, I feel like I, was, I noticed them and I realized that they were happening. But this shit hit me like a semi-tra because... I really was a bad friend last year to some people. And so this year, I'm working on goal number three, being more self-aware and less self-absorbed. Run that shit back, Turbo. Run that shit back. I'm being more self-aware and less self-absorbed this year. And I say that because I was being so transactional with people, like one way street type of friendship. Like I would only hit them up when I wanted something or if I was in a full out crisis, you had to drop everything and tend to me crying and acting a damn fool. And when I wanted to see my friends, I expected them to just drop everything just for me. And obviously I probably didn't say that to them in that way, but like I was literally acting like this. And the thought of me doing that is like pitiful. It is pitiful, like, who child the must? Because that is musty as hell. Who would want to be friends with somebody like that? Like, these are the type of friends that you literally cut off. And I'm just glad that my friends stuck it out with me. But even still, like, oh my God, punch me in the face. Punch me in the face for real. Like, if you feel like I was acting like that towards you and we never really talked about it, like, I give you permission to just come up to me and just deck my shit one time. Because I was really in my feelings, like, it's me versus everybody. Nobody has my back, yada, yada, yada. But like, it was just me versus my ego. You know what I'm saying? And that comes from thinking that the world revolves around you. And newsflash, it doesn't. You are not the only person that matters. And that's what I was thinking. You know, but you live and you learn. I feel like I was doing nothing wrong at that time. But now that I know and now that I'm aware of it, I can actively like reverse those habits you know what i'm saying because awareness is key like if you don't know that you're being if you've been out here doing something wrong you've been out here bugging acting a fool and somebody checks you and tells you like get friends that check you first of all but my friends checked me and was like hey you're doing this you're doing that and i didn't realize all the people are hurt by being transactional like that and i probably already apologized to them a thousand times but i really want to take this time to publicly say i'm so sorry for anybody that i've hurt by being transactional and being a once being in a one-sided friendship with you so let's get wine drunk let's turn up let's do face masks again i'm so sorry y'all and all jokes aside i really need to work on being a better human being and then being a better friend and then you know just moving forward like investing in my friends and the way that they invested in me last year so that's what I mean when I say being 
more self-aware and less self-absorbed because it's something that is so easy to do. It's so easy to do. And I haven't been doing it. And I'm sorry. Okay, so goal number four, be vulnerable. And a little bit of background about me, I'm not afraid of many things in life. Like it's really hard for me to find something or someone that I'm afraid of. But I am deathly afraid of vulnerability. Like I like to keep stuff just light, airy, funny, jokey, just so I don't have to ever really discuss like my inner thoughts and emotion with people because it's so much easier that way. And I'm afraid to be vulnerable with people to the point where it's not even funny. Because like my logic is like, think about it like this. You pay a huge price for being vulnerable and showing someone your heart or your emotions or your cards or whatever you want to call it. And I'd be damned if I show somebody my heart and they do some dumb shit and they try to play me. Like the next person that hurts me, y'all are going to jail, period. And even with this podcast, I had a conversation with myself. I was like, "Low, you're really going to have to open up and be vulnerable. And then I answered myself like, damn, sis, you're right. So I kept delaying it and delaying it and delaying it because I really wasn't in the headspace back in 2017 to even really do that. And now I feel like I am because the bitch has evolved. Okay. I, I want to, I think I want to try being vulnerable this year because before I like, I loved being closed off. I joke online, I act a fool, make people laugh, whatever. But how many people can truly say they know me? You know what I'm saying? And I think that it's so easy to have a bunch of surface level conversations with people and to like keep people at a distance because you'll never get hurt that way. You know what I'm saying? If you are the one that is not allowing yourself to be fully open, I feel like that doesn't really, I don't know how to explain it y'all, but like keeping people at a distance and at an arm's length, I feel like that has served me right in the past. But I think moving forward, in order for me to grow and evolve, like I say, I'm evolving to me to like reach my full, like, you know, in the video games, they have like the boss at the end that you have to defeat. Like I'm trying to be that boss <laughs> at the end. In order for me to get to that point, I got to open up and I got to be vulnerable at some point. <laughs> So this is definitely going to be the goal that I struggle with the most. And I want y'all to hold me accountable for that. And in the meantime, I'm just going to put a prayer on it. And that'll be that on that. So we're trying to be vulnerable in 2019. And if you riding this ride with me, I'm going to pray for you too. I'm going to pray for you too. Because being vulnerable and being willing to show people who you are, girl, it's hard. And I'm scared. But fuck it, we ball. Whew. All right, y'all, goal five. And this goal, it literally yanked me when I was writing it down. Kind of like when people pick up pit bulls by their fur and they hold them up. <laughs> That's how I was yanking myself by my wig straps like sis with a hard S at the end. So this goal is forgiving yourself for the things you've allowed in the past. And I came up with this because I really need to forgive myself for the things that I've allowed in the past. And I say that with a deep heavy negro spiritual side because i allowed people to treat me a certain way and it just doesn't match up with who the hell i am like admittedly i'm a sweetheart and i know y'all probably laughing right now but i do I, I am a sweetheart like i act like a bitch i'm tough on the outside but somewhere in this deep black hole that is my heart i have feelings i have feelings okay and i am loyal to the people that i love i dog walk a bitch for the people that i love and I allow people to disregard how I felt, play games with my emotions, just take me for granted overall. And I don't even know why. Because like I said, that's so far from who I'd like to think that I am as a woman. And so much stuff has happened that just caused me to step back and be like, wow, every single one of y'all got me fucked up. And I never took the time to debrief with myself on some of these situations. Because like I confronted the individuals and we handled it then and there. But I never talk to myself and debriefing with yourself sometimes is way more important than debriefing with the people involved. In my opinion, that's just my experience, y'all. You could tell me otherwise, but I do think talking to yourself about certain situations instead of just pushing it off, being like, oh, it be like that and moving on. Like you got to dwell on it. Sometimes you got to dwell on it. And so even if I don't mess with those people anymore, I still need to address it with myself and be like, sis, I forgive you. So I started doing this thing. It's probably a little weird to y'all, but it's been really working for me. It's actually been a very positive experience where I just talk to myself in the mirror and be like, I forgive you. I love you. You're an amazing person and you're being extremely hard on yourself right now. And these kind of affirmations are just so helpful because sometimes I really am being hard on myself or sometimes I am forgetting that I'm an amazing person. 
and I'm worthy of my own forgiveness. And as a woman, I feel like we do these things a lot where we find ways to blame ourselves for the actions of other people. And it's just like, why? Why do we do that? And I'm here to tell y'all, just like I tell myself all the time, there's nothing that we could have done differently that can change how someone else chose to treat us. So there's no point in throwing yourself a pity party over somebody else's actions. You hold them accountable, you address it with yourself, forgive yourself, and then you move forward. And if you're listening to this and you're still holding on to something, I'm not saying immediately go and forgive them because honestly, fuck them. Fuck them. Go forgive yourself. So pause me right now. If you got something on your chest and you want to say it with your chest, pause me. Get up right now and go look in the mirror. And even if you cry a punk ass tear, just be like, girl, I love you. I forgive you. You're an amazing woman and you're being too hard on yourself. And then come back and press play so I could tell y'all my next go. And so my last goal is it's about my anxiety because I really, really, really got to work on my anxiety in 2019. I got to figure out what is triggering these feelings inside of me and I got to find a way to confront them. And granted, this is easier said than done, but like I need to put that plan in motion because yeah. Okay. Y'all ever been around certain people or you just start to panic when you overthink about certain things and you get that little heat in your chest and your throat start closing up and you'd be like, <laughs> I still haven't figured that out. Like in the meantime, I've just been working like meditating every day and going to the gym and just trying to stay calm and counting to 10 and all of that. But I don't know how long that's going to last. Like it's actually kind of funny to think about like how easy is it to just remember to breathe and we forget because when we're in panic mode all that stuff goes out of the window <laughs> like when you're panicking the thing that you're panicking about is the only thing that matters and it's the most dramatic situation ever like sometimes i have a panic attack about something and i'll just bust out laughing because i'm like i'm really stressed about this i'm really stressed about like all the if you look back at your life all the things that you were stressed about and you panicked over or they just left you with a really unsettling feeling. You have defeated those obstacles. Like you are here today. You are a bigger, better bitch. You've evolved. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know what type of situations y'all been in, but this to me personally, there are some things that I was extremely stressed about in previous years. And look at me now, girl, get into the bag, get into the bag, hopping out of my feelings and hopping in the bag, period. So it's no point in me being anxious and really being stressed and overwhelmed by certain feelings. Like, you just got to acknowledge that it's there and decide in that moment, fight or flight. Either you're going to confront it head on and you're going to be like, you know what? The devil is working harder than Kris Jenner right now and I'm not for it. And just start counting to 10. Like, you got to ask yourself, sis, is this the thing that's going to defeat me? And for me, the answer should always be no, because I'm a bad bitch. You can't kill me. You know what I'm saying? So you decide fight or flight in that moment. Like, don't stop acting goofy. Stop acting goofy, Lauren. Pull it together. Because it's not cute. You out here bugging. You crying and having panic attacks over stuff that you're going to look back in five years and be like, stressed for what? Stressed over who? Make, make it, it make sense, sense girl. girl. Make, make it make sense. sense. All right, y'all. So we finna run this back just so y'all remember the six things that I said. <laughs> Number one, always capitalize off your talent. Turn whatever your side hustle is, your hobby, whatever gift you bring to the world, find a way to monetize that. Turn it into a bag and yeet that bag. I'm not going to tell y'all again. It's like the fifth time I had to say it and I meant it. I said what I said. Capitalize off your talent, y'all. Or somebody else is going to capitalize off their talent and you're going to be sitting at home crying. And I ain't going to feel bad for your bum ass. Period. Goal number two, write it down. And thank God I wrote these gems down because I high key would have forgotten them. Like I had to scroll to the top a couple times and be like, hold up. What'd I say? Number three, be more self-aware and less self-absorbed. And that all comes down to just be a better friend. Hopefully a lot of y'all not in these one-sided, one-way street friendships. And even if you are, now is the time to reevaluate. Like, is it you or is it then? And then decide what you want to do from there. Number four, be vulnerable. Be who you want to be. B-A-R-B-I-E, headass. It's like, nah, I just need y'all to hold me accountable with this one, though, on a serious note. Because Lord knows. I might not even do this myself. Like there will be times I have to turn the mic off if it gets too personal or too emotional. And I need y'all to drag me like sis vulnerability. vulnerability. Where's Where she, she at? at? Bring her out. I would love to meet her, you know? So if, if y'all ever catch me not being open and being vulnerable, drag me. I'm giving you permission to drag me. I already gave y'all permission to punch me in the face when I'm being a bad friend. So now I'm giving y'all permission to drag me. 
Number five, I'm not even going to recap one because I told y'all that one hit me in the chest. But forgive yourself and move on. Remember the affirmation that I told y'all? Say it. I can write it down in the post if you want and then we can share it online. But I would love for y'all to start just being nice to yourselves. Just be nice to yourself. And the final one is figure out your anxiety triggers and decide. Address it, acknowledge it, and fight or flight. Fight or flight, y'all. It's as simple as that. All in all, though, I really think that we all just collectively need to practice more self-love and self-care. And I'm not talking about like face masks, mani patties, and treating yourself and all that other crap that we think is going to stop us from being sad. Because Solange already done said it. We can't run it away. We can't sleep it away. We can't sex it away. So if you're in the sad girls club, sis, you finna stay there until you practice real self-love. And the only way to do that is to look inward. Start with introspection. Why not figure out what you're doing wrong and then move forward? Insanity is literally doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And that's exactly what we continue to do year after year after year. In 2019, we're pulling it all together, y'all. We're pulling it all together. And I promise you it's going to start with these six goals. And if you have any other goals, please share it with me because we are taking over. DJ Khaled style, okay? So, y'all, thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you guys so, so much. I love you guys, and I'll see y'all in the next episode. For now, though, you can follow me on Twitter at Lauren Taylor, on Instagram at Lauren Taylor, and you can follow the podcast at Shaking the Table Podcast. Bye!